Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Shirag. Hello, hello. Hey, Christian. Hey, it's great to be here. It's great to have you. For folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us an intro? Who you are, where you are, and what you do? Yeah, sure. I'm Shirag Patel. I uh, live and work in London, UK. I'm a Microsoft 365 consultant, as well as the owner of Patel Consulting. Uh, so it's uh, basically specializing in delivering. Uh, services around migrations, deployments, covering Microsoft Teams, SharePoint for many years, Power Platform, um, and generally work as an IT pro. And, uh, and I'm an MVP for a couple of years now, uh, love speaking in the community, doing conferences. Uh, I'm also a certified trainer, uh, as well as uh, covering other, other uh, disciplines around TOGAF architecture and uh, and various other uh, certifications within the industry, just to sort of keep keep going and you know just learn more about the the Microsoft tech that we that we have that I work with on a daily basis. So uh, yeah, that's briefly uh, <laughs> about myself. But techchirag.com is is the best place to get to me. And what's what's your what's your background? What was kind of your path into becoming MVP? Like what what technology did you kind of find your way into the program through? Sure. Uh, when it comes to MVP, I, I mean, I heard about the program many, many years ago, but I never kind of reached out or never applied for it uh, until only a couple of years uh, ago. Uh, Chris, Chris Hoard, uh, who's also yep. an office and uh, app services MVP, and he kind of reached out because I used to speak only a few, few events in a year, but obviously, you know, follow a lot around the SharePoint and Teams. Uh, but Basically, just kind of you know, just sharing what I what I do in terms of my work experiences as well as things that I learned, and um, and yeah, I think just uh, you know, obviously, I wouldn't say that's a secret success formula <laughs> to become an MVP, but certainly, I think uh, just being part of the community and, and just you know, getting to know people, learning from the community members, even like yourself, uh, Christian, is is just a great way you know of basically giving back. To the community so that's how i've been inspired by by a lot of the folks in the us as well as in in europe you know i've had a number of uh, friends and in fact i'll i'll name a one and, and it's part of our conversation so eric overfield who's been now for many years an mvp yeah. and is also a microsoft regional director which is a completely different thing but um and, and i remember talking to him and i you know putting forth his name you know uh, and he wasn't able to kind of break ground and, and becoming an MVP. It really is like a black box. There's no like, Hey, I did this list of 10 things. Therefore, Hey, Microsoft award me. It's like, it doesn't work that way. It it's very much, you know, Microsoft goes in selects and there could be, you know, a, a number of different criteria that make a difference depending yeah. on the region, de depending on the area of focus, you know, that things. And so it's funny, like er Eric had it on his, it was like one of his goals to become an MVP. And I remember me seeing him in an event and he came up, he said, you know what? I, I just resolved, said, I, I'm giving up on trying to become an MVP. I said, you know, what I've seen is that it really doesn't matter. It's like, it's been so much benefit to me personally, to my business, just my level of involvement in the community. It doesn't matter that I, if I had an MVP or not, like it's been so rewarding just doing all, going through yeah. these, being active within the community. And like a month later, he became an MVP. So it kind of surprised him that it like, you know, came out. And, you know, yeah, that's a good people, feeling. Yeah, it, it is. So, I, I mean, what would you say? What are your like primary contribution types? Like what, what are the, some of the things that you do? Sure. So mainly in the SharePoint and Teams area. So uh, in particular uh, around the Office and App Services. So generally, uh, I don't code. I don't develop solutions. So mainly uh, promoting uh, kind of the good practices around the IT pro uh, side of things. So, you know, a lot of the folks uh, and especially as an independent uh, contractor, when I work with various organizations, a lot of the folks tend to focus just on a specific area of the technology, whether that's exchange or the you know, identity infrastructure, SharePoint. It, you know, depending on the perception historically right with. yeah and there uh, hey there's <laughs> still a lot of share <laughs> there there are I, there are still and just had this conversation a couple of days ago there's still a lot of people that are uh on 
hybrid or on purely on-prem and a lot that are in kind of the government sector that yeah. are on that. And so there are still a lot of people that are 100% SharePoint people and that's all that they do. I've got and a that's, cousin and that's pretty much where I kind of touch around that in terms of the migration space, because, you know, knowing everything about Office 365 is one thing, but given that the maturity of the organization who might be still, you know, let's say stuck in a second or third gear, if you like, of an IT, then you still have to carry that IT team forward to understand, you know, the full landscape of what's in, well, Microsoft 365 and SharePoint just being, you know, although a small part of it, but still the rich part of it as well because of, you know, all the file and collaboration experiences. So when you kind of, when you look at it from that perspective, then that's pretty much where I get the job done in our, you know, in particular, I'm doing the migration is one thing, that's just one vehicle to get from A to B, but then it's all about the things that the organization should be doing by their IT. And then pretty much, if you like, I can walk away from that organization, hoping that they've kind of got enough toolbox in them, in them, in their place to be able to drive that journey forward. What are some of the, I mean, your experience working with some of those customers that still have some of those on-prem, you know, components or are struggling with making the move. What's some of the reason, like, why are they struggling with the, the move to the cloud? What are their reasons for remaining with the older technology? Is it purely just a, like a, a you know, Hey, we spent all this money and we're going to make sure we get the value for, for however many years before we even consider making a move or is it something else? I think, I mean, a lot of the time, what I find is the skill set more than anything else, mm. um, in a sense that they've got their day jobs in terms of what they do, they, they have enough. Uh, and that could be purely because if it's a poorly managed IT, so they've got a lot of services on their hands to be able to try and support those services. And they tend to also, then they tend to view that, you know, SharePoint or Teams or anything else is more of an extra baggage if you like on top of what they do because you know let's not forget they have their legacy business applications their services and you know their user base that they have to support and a lot of those are kind of mundane in terms of the kind of support they give so i tend to find that they don't have enough skills or not enough learning power to be able to to kind of learn about that because they always tend to think we'll for example you know and without surmising a lot they'll think that they'll get somebody else in the in the team who might just do SharePoint yeah. uh, or Office 365, right? Um, and then along the way, they'll probably learn something about, say, Azure, if you like, and then, you know, Power Platform in which they may have to convert um, or upgrade their legacy applications to something that, you know, like Dynamics or, or Power Platform uh, suite of products. So, um, that tends to be the key thing. Uh, but in terms of the other extreme, I also find is more of a tick box or a kind of, if you like, a spend of an IT to try and get something about Office 365. And typically file shares tend to be the starting point for a lot of these things before then they realize that, you know, there's the teams and that there's the services, the apps that you get part of the teams and all that opportunities that open them uh, open that up then it's obviously a different ball game altogether as, as opposed to being just a project that they have to deliver because it then becomes a huge program uh, and that's sometimes very hard to sell to the to that you know limited constrained it organization yeah the you know the and the hard part of that as well is that you know, there's there's everything the conversations that are happening within it and the management and the cost of making the change and the new and all of that. But at some point, end users start looking at, they're seeing you know, the, all these rich capabilities that are coming through what's new and they're gonna be pushing. And the longer you wait, the harder that transition could be. It, it is, it is. And I think that's, um, I think it's, it's one of those things where, you know, thinking about service is one thing, but a lot of the folks that I work with, they're more like, you know, if you like, they think about servers, <laughs> the hardware is right. And all these things. So that's a switch that sometimes they, they, they have to make like it or not, because that's just how Microsoft 365 and the cloud works. Right. The world is moving that, that rate of right. absorption of that knowledge. It's not within that power because 
you know, I mean, I remember when I used to read books uh, on, you know, SharePoint, SQL Server, pretty much what every three years we had that upgrade cycles. So you could probably, you know, you could set your timetable up to say, you know, when you got to swat up that knowledge and, and try and apply that. Now I'm on Twitter practically every day, you know, just kind of, you know, get some of my uh, learnings, uh, nuggets, if you like, from that, as well as being able to just keep up with uh, through the RSS feeds and, and you know, various products uh, that we have. So it's, it's certainly a discipline uh, that one has to change about themselves to be able to try and regularly keep up as opposed to that my organization asking me to do it. Well, one other thing too is that, I, and I know that uh, for, for anybody that's listening is thinking, well, we still have a hybrid or we're still, you know, SharePoint online. We have those components, you know, there, uh, while, you know, Shrag and I are both, you know, huge advocates of the cloud of Microsoft 365, that there are valid business cases for remaining on-prem and having those, those platforms and those tools that are out there. And I should just clarify, this is my huge disclaimer, Shrag, is that <laughs> Microsoft is, has also stated that they are going to continue creating the on-prem version of SharePoint. So it's, there's no uh, 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 sunset date. There's no plan yet to shut that I'm down. I'm not out of it. <laughs> no, they're, they're specifically like, there is no sunset date. And so I, I don't know the timing of the next version. They've started to talk about that, but um, what we had our 2019 version. So probably, I don't know this year, maybe the next year, but every three, four years, there'll be a new version of the on-prem. So, so well, especially yeah. after that subscription model, isn't it? I think it's right. what, what's it called now? Subscription edition yeah. or something like that, right? Right, so, right, right. So making it even easier to go in and stay up to date with that. Yep. So what else? So what are you uh, writing about, talking about lately? What are you, kind of your latest sessions that you're talking about? Yeah, so got a couple of sessions coming up uh, around uh, security and compliance, uh, mainly within Microsoft Teams. So uh, in fact, that's probably one of the session I'm um, speaking about at uh, at the Scottish Summit, uh, which is coming up in sometime yeah. June next year. Um, so, you know, it's a huge conference. I've been there before in person as well. Uh, but yeah, generally around Microsoft 365, uh, the administration side of things, as well as the uh, the end user experiences as well. So, you know, even just using like our daily tools like PowerPoint or Excel uh, and being able to at least use it from the end user perspective uh, to at least understand what are the feature experiences. And especially with Teams, we know a lot has been rolled out this year. Uh, especially like the meeting experiences and the meeting apps. So there's that whole area. Uh, so that's one of the sessions I'll be doing uh, next year as well. But uh, otherwise, I think in generally, I tend to cover not just one specific technology either. I tend to kind of hop on and off, <laughs> if yeah. you like, within that wide, wider spectrum of, of M365 because... Um, Purely because it just changes all the time, right? And uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to keep going. Yeah. yeah. What I find a lot too that a lot of the questions, a lot of the things that I write about and talk about, are based off of customer conversations. Somebody asks a question and be like, "Yeah, hey, that'd make a great blog post, or I should go to do that." A lot of my, I know that the most highly trafficked topics on my, you know, YouTube page and blog are those where I talk about productivity solutions and I've been doing a lot around teams. I just, I, I like I've, I need to write more. I need to do more of that type of content. I know that's where suddenly I see the peaks in, in, yeah. in leadership. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, there's a number of other well, things. In fact, you're coming over, right? Next month, next month, isn't it? Because obviously I also- uh, I, Well, you know. coming, coming over virtually, yes. Hey, in spirit. <laughs> That's right. I would love to be back over there. So in fact, in fact, after the European SharePoint conference or the, the European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure conference yes. uh, in, uh, uh, um, where was it? It was in um, uh, Prague. Prague, last one. Yeah. December. That's, that's yeah, last met, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. December of 2019. Yeah. I went from that event, like that was the last big in-person conference uh, I, my in-laws were living in downtown London. In fact, it was in the theater district. It was fantastic or museum oh, district. Good. Sorry. So it was over by the university, um, where we had the SharePoint Saturday a few years back and with all the museums all around there, just a great location, just 
south of Hyde Park and just love yeah, that yeah. Area. Kensington area. Yeah. And staying in London for a week for free is a good thing as well. Uh, I loved <laughs> that aspect of it. But anyway, so I was there staying with my in-laws that were in a little uh, apartment there and seeing everybody. And I was planning to be right back. In fact, I was coming back in April of 2020 was the plan was to spend like two weeks in London and visit people and do user groups and all this kind of stuff. And as we know, yeah, you know, COVID yeah. intervened there, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hope to make my way back over. No, good, good. I mean, I think, you know, virtually be good because obviously uh, M365 UK is, I've tried to keep up. I'm, in fact, I created that user group uh, online um, uh, in the pandemic times, right? So uh, it's been running every month. Um, so yeah, it'll be good to have you next month on that. I'm looking forward to that. For the folks who are listening, 26th of January, uh, Jan. So M365 UK, it's where you need to search on Google and uh, sign up on the meetup. Well, Shrag, that's a great, thanks a lot for, for doing this, of course, recording this session. And that, that was kind of like where I usually wrap up is like, what are the best ways to reach you? So definitely go and take a look at, do a search for the, the uh, M365 UK user group, sign up for that. And then, and I'll be presenting in January. So uh, probably just a few days after this goes live, gets published. Um, <laughs> but uh, how else can people find you? What are the best ways to reach you? Yeah, absolutely. So techchirag.com uh, uh, is, is the way to go. Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, everything, you'll find the links from that. Uh, and yeah, like every time I say, even in my presentations, uh, don't hesitate. Just ask me any question. If, I'm, if, I, if I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll help you connect to the folks uh, who do so just feel free to reach out and if you want to speak as well um, I can sort of help you out as uh, you know no formal skills required just your content and then the rest you'll just take care of it so yeah that's, a, uh, that's always yeah, I love that's, that that's you know, for, for, .com. for new people that, that's coming up like yeah you have to start somewhere people and speaking in the user group online is 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 easy best, the best the feeling user. right yeah Share just about what you've learned, uh, what you have done at your own work. Just share. It could be a work in progress. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Just get into that habit of being transparent and share what you what your knowledge is and what your experience is. It's a great and that's the key, right? Because also, even if you if you do find that if if the topic that you want to talk about and somebody else has presented, don't let that get in your way because it's always about your perspective, your uniqueness. Because what you think might be different to what others or even the experts might think, because everybody learns from, from everyone. And that's how I've pretty much done for myself, because, yeah, books are one thing. Microsoft Learn is one thing, but then, you know, reaching out and then, yeah, so uh, it's, it's the way to do it. And, you know, and being able to then increase that confidence as well as being able to at least being part of that industry and the community as well, because there's lots happening at Microsoft, especially are doing a lot uh, around that in terms of, you know, various initiatives, as you know, it's as well, always to, changing. To try and, get yeah. That. Yeah. and, and it's also industry specific. So if you, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that are out there that are kind of general, like, Hey, this is what's new in the technology. But if you have experience within the education sector, or manufacturing or retail or, or, or uh, you know, communications, telecom, yeah. you can bring that perspective. That is a fantastic way to go and kind of build a name. Be, be the Microsoft 365 person for the education sector or, yeah. or you know, whatever. They go build it up that way. No, definitely, definitely. Well, great. great. Well, it was great talking to you, connecting, and we'll. Uh, I'd love to talk more, but thanks for having me. And uh, we'll, we'll be talking next year. month. So we'll be talking. Absolutely. Again. So, all right. Correct. Have a great weekend. Have a great New Year's. Thanks. You too.